our thoughts actually real? In order to answer this question, one would need to understand what a thought was, where it came from, and then determine how real it actually is. To reiterate, as I will do in my videos, there are a million possible perspectives to understand and answer this question from. I will ultimately be using my research and findings to determine the answer to this and many other questions that come up time and time again in my area of work. The first question I'm going to answer is what are thoughts? So to begin with, we are born feeling and not thinking, right? Well, it must be because we were not born with language and it is only with language that we are able to think. Okay, so without being able to speak, I could not have thought, and so it's probably safe to say that I learned to speak and then that enabled me to think. From this I would derive that our thoughts are a bunch of conversations that we are having with ourselves, Because when we are thinking we are not talking to another outside of us, we are talking to ourselves. Doesn't it take two to have a conversation? One would imagine it does. Okay, so my thoughts are a bunch of conversations I'm having with me and other parts of me. This would be the voices in my head. Aha, transactional analysis and ego states. Okay. These transactions I am having with myself, the voices, so to speak, are related to the various ego states my psyche encompasses. Look, I unfortunately do not have time to cover these in this video, but I do have a playlist on my channel in which I have explained ego states in great detail. The link is in the description below. Now, the next question we need to answer is where do our thoughts actually come from? And then we can determine if they're real. So we've established that our thoughts are a bunch of conversations we are having with other parts of ourselves. Interesting. These other parts we can define as our ego states, parents, adults, child, being the various states of mind our ego moves in and out of. And then these states of mind not only determine the sorts of conversations we have with ourselves, but also with others. Okay, I'll give you an example. I'll use the same one as last time because, well, it's my favourite. I'm walking down the street and I see a colleague of mine walking on the other side of the road. I see she looks at me and so I smile and wave, as ever, excitedly. She does not respond in any way, she looks away and continues on her path. Situation, I waved at my colleague and she did not respond to me. Thought, oh my god, that stupid cow, she just blanked me. Damn, that's the last time I talked to her. Ego state, rebellious child and then into adapted child. Upbringing, mother was nurturing parent and free child. Father was critical parent and adapted child. Here's where it gets interesting. Our responses are determined by our ego states, which are determined by our beliefs, which are ultimately determined by our upbringing and collective consciousness, if we want to go that far. That's a lot of determines. So what do I mean? Okay, now let's use the same example, but change the person reacting to her colleague. This person has a completely different upbringing and beliefs, which leads to a completely different set of responses from different ego states. External stimuli I waved at my colleague and she did not respond. Thought. I don't think she even saw me. She looked very thoughtful, I wonder if she's okay. I might drop her a message later. Ego state. Adult and then nurturing parent. Upbringing. A lone parent, mother, nurturing parent, and adult. So, due to their unique upbringing, they reacted to the same experience in completely different ways. One moved into rebellious child state of mind, making the experience mean something negative about herself. She blanked me, leading to an imbalanced response. That's the last time I talked to her. Her reactions are all based on assumptions, and until she actually speaks to her colleague, she will never really know what happened. Another interesting point to note here would be that this particular individual has not participated in much self-awareness or development, and so this means she has not consciously chosen her state of mind. 
meaning her reactions to this experience were ultimately from an autopilot default position. Now that's scary because it means unless we are consciously participating in self-awareness exercises on a consistent basis, most of what we do and say and think is coming from an autopilot default position. Damn. If you want to delve deeper into this, check out my video titled, You Are Not In Control Of The Decisions You Make. It's in the link in the description below. Now, the other individual, due to her upbringing, moved into an adult state of mind, this being her default position, which meant she not only made observations, but also objectively reasoned with herself about the experience, enabling her to decide on a balanced response, both emotionally and practically. Why did these two individuals react from completely different default positions, leading to such a polarity of responses? Well, I don't have time to answer those questions in this video, and so you'll just have to stay tuned for the next one. But what I can answer is this. Are our thoughts actually real? Thinking comes from language, and language is man-made, developed throughout hundreds and thousands of years. Our thinking comes from our beliefs, and our ego states, both generally dictated by the actions of our parents, guardians, and or authority figures. Our ego states reflect the various voices in our heads, their attitudes and likely responses. And so, with this in mind, the likelihood of your thoughts being real are pretty slim, as the majority of them are nothing but a bunch of assumptions and judgments, drawn from decades of assumptions and judgments. The silver lining to this would be that with every reflection you observe of yourself, and with every conscious effort you make to work on your growth and self-awareness, you move one step closer to your thoughts becoming a reality, and a choice, not a default autopilot position. Now that definitely is something well worth working towards, right? Thank you for watching and please do like and share this video so we can spread this invaluable knowledge onto others, especially to those we love. If you've got any questions, opinions or experiences you would like to share, please do pop them in the comments section below. I would love to hear from you. The third video will be coming shortly, so make sure you subscribe to the channel and press the bell button to receive notifications.